Next let's look at doing the bristles for the head of the toothbrush. I don't need to have the displacement object uh, visible at this time, so I'm going to throw it on another layer. And let me also rename that layer. And I'll change the color of the layer. and hide its visibility. Now I'm going to be using Grasshopper to make the bristles. So let me zoom in here on the world origin. We'll just need to be looking at that. And I'll run the command Grasshopper. And here we're going to make a circle. And this won't be a really in-depth Grasshopper tutorial, so I won't explain everything I'm doing here. It's going to start from zero, and we're going to make a patch surface with this circle, and then populate that patch surface with points. I'll hide the preview for all three of those components, and you can see the random points that we get in a circular shape. Okay. Next, I want to move these in the z-axis straight up. And by default, the value of 1 is used here. And that's, uh, as you can see, 1 unit up in the z. I'll hide the preview for the original points. Now, I want the movement to be staggered. Um, these are representing the top of each bristle, which is not going to be uh, a flat cut right across. It'll be staggered a little bit, so this will add some realism. I'll go into Sets, Sequence, Random, and I'll use a random value for the factor for the movement in Z. However, there's only one value right now, so it's one random number. Um, and if you hover over F, you can see it's 0.771. So what I want to do here is make a number slider. So I'll double click the canvas and type 200. And this will be the number of points uh, that I use to populate the head of uh, one of these bristle bundles that we'll be making. And I'll also use this as the number of random values. Now I want to control the extent of that, so I'll make just a default number slider, which is 0 to 1, and drag that into the domain range for this random component. And now you can control the extent of that staggering. I'll then take these uh, points and use uh, line start direction and length. And let me get another number slider here um, and we'll call this uh, 3.00 for the length. Okay, now we can size this and change it all we want later. This is all I needed Grasshopper for. Um, I could save this definition out so I could quickly come back and change things and then bake them out again. Um, right now I'll just bake out these lines and then close Grasshopper. Okay, so we've got all these lines and they have a staggered top, which is more like a bristle. And I'll do Zoom Selected. Now these are just regular old lines in Rhino now, so if I turn on the control points for them, I can grab all the bottom points and scale them in like that. And I could also grab all the points at the top there and just angle them a little bit like that, which will also be nice. All right, I'll turn off the control points.
Next, let's take the curves that we have here for the bristles and run the pipe command. Now, if you have a bunch of curves selected before you run pipe, you can do them all at the same time. I'm going to do a flat cap and a radius of 0.05. And with the curve still selected, I'll hit the delete key and just throw those curves away. Remember, we can always bake out more from Grasshopper pretty quick. Now here we've got our poly surfaces, and if we were to start patterning these bristles all over the, the head of the toothbrush, our display performance um, will drop. We're going to have a harder time rotating the model smoothly. So the next bit of this is a display management technique in Rhino. We're going to use Extract Render Mesh, and we've just extracted the polygons that um, allow you to see the model in a shaded mode. Uh, this is called a render mesh. Uh, what's selected still is the poly surface, so I'll click um, delete here on the keyboard. And what I have is these mesh objects. Now your display mode probably shows them like this by default, and this is with all those black lines um, in any shaded mode or any display mode for that matter. You'll have a mesh wires option in the display panel. If you uncheck that, then you can also display the mesh um, faster. We don't need to see the edges of all the polys. Now if I select all of these render meshes, uh, you can see in the command line we have 150 of them. Um, if we started patterning these on the head of the toothbrush, uh, we would also have a slowdown in display performance um, as we increase the number. Um, uh, probably around a few thousand and it's going to start to be slow to rotate. So the technique here is to take these 150 mes meshes and use the join command to join them into one mesh object. And now we have uh, much fewer uh, meshes even though they're not physically connected they're considered one mesh object in the eyes of Rhino. All right, I'll take this mesh and drag it off to the side and tap Alt. And then I'm going to use the mirror command. And I'm going to click record history. And it's going to start the mirror plane at zero. And then I'll hold down Shift here to turn on ortho snap so that stays straight, like that. Now because I recorded history, I can move this guy around and have it update on this side. Like that. I'll tap Alt to make a copy there. And maybe I'll rotate this one around, hold down Shift like that. So you can design like this after you have one bundle of bristles, you can design the layout of your toothbrush head. And I'll speed up the capture here as I finish this design. This process is really just history with mirror. Um, I'm using the gumball a lot here to position and right here I'll take this row and use array linear to make a whole bunch of copies at once and from the side view position and scale these bundles of bristles on the head. Like that. Okay, I was still able to uh, rotate the model and work on the design of the head of the toothbrush um, with the combining of the meshes as I had, but we can make this still a little bit better by combining those meshes that will be the same material yet again. So it's more obvious this time that they do not touch exactly, um, but we can still join them together into one mesh object. All right. So I'm thinking about the color uh, breakout that we'll have here. 
and these will get joined into one as well. So really we now have three mesh objects, one, two, and three. We still have a lot of polygons to display, uh, but we've decreased what Rhino has to do to manage these mesh objects.